Alright guys, how's it going? Now I've noticed a lot of new users coming to Blender lately. Now this could be down to several different reasons. One, it could be financial, it's getting pretty damn expensive to own or even just rent software. Two, it might be because the application that they use is becoming stagnant, things like mode on Lightwave, development's definitely slowed down. Or three, it just might be that Blender's looking pretty damn sexy these days. Now when it comes to 3D modeling, there's a few add-ons I recommend you enable by default. Things like TinyCAD mesh tools, definitely one. Loop tools is another one. But today, I'm going to concentrate on the edit mesh tools. Now, if you've been around Blender for any length of time, there's a good chance you've got this enabled already. It's been around from 2.6, so it's an old one, but it's pretty damn good to be honest. And it pretty much does exactly what it says on the tin. It lets you edit the mesh. So, this comes pre-packaged, you don't even need to download anything, just go to add-ons, search for edit mesh tools and enable it. Traditional fashion, we'll select the default cube, we'll tab into edit mode. Now there's several ways that we can actually use this add-on. The first and the main one being, if you go to the edit tab, you can see here mesh tools and I'll just drop these down for you. You can also use the right context menu, so we can right click, you can see here mesh tools and it gives us a whole bunch of options. We also have things like in terms of the menu, if you go to edges, you've got offset edges, stuff like this. You can also use F3 to bring up the search menu, so you can always use this as well. Now I'm going to predominantly use the end panel or the properties panel. And I won't go through every single feature, but I'll kind of go over the main ones to be honest. So we'll just quickly work down the list. Now on the right here, you can see here we can actually change the selection method, vertex, edges, Verts and face select. So we can also redefine how these get used. But to be honest, by default, these are pretty cool. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to select a single point. I'll go to Vertex Chamfer. You can see here it's chamfered. I'm going to bring up the dialog box and obviously I can change things like the distance. Nice and easy. So we'll quickly undo this. So when it comes to extruding vertices, it's nice and easy. You don't always necessarily need to select a point. What you can do here is you can select a face. You can go to extrude vertices and you'll notice that it actually extrudes. Now I'm not a big fan of the way Blender handles this, I hate the fact that you need to hit X to constrain it to the X axis, but hey, that's just life to be honest. So you can see here, I've extruded these vertices, what I obviously can do here is I can select these points in order, and then I can press F to fill, and I get a nice polygon. So that's pretty much the extrude vertices, when it comes to random vertices, it just randomises the vertices to be honest, and obviously you have the bevel. So we'll move this over to the edge tools, and this is where I think this add-on kind of stands out in its own, to be honest. So let me quickly undo this, and I'm going to show you offset edges. So before we start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop select these polygons, and I'm actually going to use cut faces. Now this kind of reminds me of Bandsaw and Lightwave. It's excellent for doing multiple cuts, but we'll just leave it at one at the moment. I'll go back to edges, and I'll do a loop select of this edge, and we can use offset edges. Now offset edges reminds me of point normal move, that's the best way I can describe it. So I'll click here, and you can see here it offsets edge. Now I can change it in terms of the width. Now if I come up here, we have three different options. We can offset the edge, we can extrude the edge, or we can move the edge. And move the edge pretty much works like scaling. So we'll quickly undo this, and I'll show you what the edge roundify tool does. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this top edge here. We'll zoom in a little bit, and I'll hit edge roundify. Now I'm not a big fan of the way it automatically selects all the mesh, but hey, what can we do? You can see here it's rounded the edge. Now we can flip this so we can actually change this to the Y and Z axis so it does something like this. I'm going to put it back onto the X and Y. And obviously we can control things like the segments. So if we want it smoother, we can smooth it out a little bit. Let's put these up. And we obviously have different options. We can make it a circle, we can flip it. There's a whole bunch of options here to be honest and it's pretty cool. So what this means is, I could loop select this edge, I can press E to extrude, press Z, and I can do something like this. Nice and easy. And that's pretty much the edge roundify tool, it's good for doing things like this. So let's take a look at what the set edge length actually does. I'm going to select this edge, I'm going to hit set edge length, and let's say I want to make it manual, I want the target length to be 1.2, I can hit OK, and it actually brings this edge into 1.2 metres. Now, once it's activated, we can actually use it in real time. We can also change the behaviour from clockwise to proportional, so actually work in the middle and it'll shrink everything in. And obviously you have anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, and that should go from left to right. So, set edge length lets you set the edge of a length. Edge floor plan, I'm not entirely sure why you would use it or how it would come in handy, but it kind of flattens everything out. Extrude the edges is pretty obvious, it extrudes the edge nice and easy, so we can hit it, do something like this. 
I quickly undo this, and of course you've got bevel edges, if I select this edge, I can bevel, and I can use the middle mouse button to quickly bevel it, nice and easy. Now when it comes to the face tools, this is where this add-on actually does kind of stand out on its own, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face, and you have things like face inset fillet, so you can see here it's kind of filleted the face, we can change this from an end on to a triangle, we can change the amount, we can even change the number of sides, and we can change the distance, so we can actually start to get nice shapes like this. And then we can use things like multi extrude, nice and easy. And if I select this, we can obviously use inset faces. Now, one of the reasons why I actually like using this menu is let's say I've got this one and I want to inset the edge, I'll select the polygon and I'll hit I. And I don't have a big distance because of my mouse position. So when you're over here, you can see that I can actually have a little bit more control. Extrude individual faces will pretty much do exactly what you think it's going to do. It'll extrude the individual face. Another great tool is the Split Solidify tool. So I'm going to select this polygon, for example, and I'm going to hit Split and Solidify. And you can see here it actually splits it from the mesh and solidifies it. And we can change things like the distance and obviously the thickness. So that does come in handy. Now a lot of these tools, they're not necessarily native, but there are shortcut keys for like inset and stuff like this. So it's just getting a fine balance between using shortcut keys and tools and obviously these can all be assigned to a shortcut so if you just right click on them you can assign a shortcut nice and easy and I'll just quickly go through the utility tools this video is getting pretty damn long you've got subdivide you've got merge by distance think of that as a well tool limited dissolve so for example if I select two polygons like this I can hit limited dissolve and it'll sort it out Flip normals, that'll flip the normals, obviously, so if I actually go into the overlay, I can put in the face orientation, you can see here these polygons are actually around the wrong way, so you can quickly flip them, nice and easy, triangulate faces, that'll obviously triangulate them, and tries to quad, that'll do the opposite, it'll change tries to quads, and a relax function, I'll just kind of relax the polygons. And that is pretty much mesh tools. I highly recommend if you're moving from another 3D application to pretty much enable this. It'll get you quickly used to the tools. What I do recommend personally is learning shortcuts, but not every single one of these tools is here. So, hey, do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me in your mode. You know what to do. Take care.